This is an animation I designed for an animation tutorial of mine. The character comes from the Gumroad page of VM Comics. And this is how the animation looked like once I finished animating it in Maya. As you see, its presentation could improve. If you find a cheap way to make your animation appear nicer and a bit more in context, the perceived quality will increase quite a lot. But how did we get from here to here? I didn't really have time to model a complex environment in 3D, so I wanted to solve this shot by just painting a basic environment in Photoshop. The features I wanted for this environment was the ability to split the foreground, middle ground and background, and at the same time to retain the shadows of the character so that I could composite the character and the shadows back onto the environment as I needed. The layer split allows me to move a camera and composite this in 2.5D, I just wanted to design something that looked appealing but didn't require the amount of skills that a professional environment artist would require. In this video I'm going to show how I went through the process of designing this environment and as you will see the first things I needed were a composition and reference pictures. And finally in Maya or in whichever 3D software you're employing I set up the render to give me the color of the character with the alpha and the shadows of the character so that once back into a compositing package I can easily recompose it everything back and even add a little bit of camera motion to give the illusion of depth. I plan to show the compositing part in a following video. In any case, before we get there, let's go back to the beginning and let's start from what we had, which was just the playblast of our animation. So let's say you have your animation ready, the first thing you really want to do in this case is to get rid of anything in the scene that is visible for now, you can just hide the stuff because you need the character and you need the position of the character in space. It would be great if we could do a screenshot of this character with transparency. The best way to do it is to do a play blast and as a setting we set images and PNG in the encoding. PNG should come out with an alpha, so it should store single frames all of them with an alpha. So in fact, now that I render out the single PNG, you see that the PNG comes with an alpha. So that means that I can now drag this PNG in Photoshop or on any image editing software and start editing it. I will also take a screenshot of the latest frame this way. I will have two frames, the beginning and the end, and they are based on camera. That's very important. You need to take screenshots from the camera view that you plan to use for your final Play Blast. We are going to open these two pictures in Photoshop and now you see we have the beginning and the end of this animation. So, and we have the transparency as well. So now it's time for us to collect some pictures of rocky canyons. This is Rocket Girl we are talking about. So I imagine she could deal with a rocky environment of sorts, something that looks like canyons. Back into Photoshop, I first will zoom out quite a lot because I want to start thinking in terms of composition. The idea being that if I paint on a very small thumbnail, I won't get bogged down in details. I will paint the silhouette of the girl black and I will start painting in grayscale, trying to find a composition that is suitable for me. I want it to look canyony and a bit alien, so maybe a couple of planets and some rocky mountains in the background will do. At the beginning I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to obtain, but then as I painted on, and please notice that I am assuming I practically don't know how to paint in this thing, you see I'm moving stuff around but I'm not really doing any detail in here. Move the planets around and put some nice rocks in the foreground to create the illusion of depth. And once I'm done, I can zoom back in and I can make the canvas bigger because now I want to call in all the references. I will create a black mask in front of everything just so that I will only ever see the composition and nothing else. And I will start dragging in all of my references until I have all the references I need. I wanted all my references to be taken in daylight because that's when I want to set the scene. I put all the references in a group so that I can disable them when I don't need them. And now I can start sampling colors. So I will start by doing a very bright tone for the main platforms the character will use so that this way it will be clear where the character is. I have created an empty layer for that, of course. And then I will go for darker tones, which I'm still sampling from pictures, you see, not really picking up any swatch from Photoshop, I'm not good enough with colors to be able to take that decision. And I'm going to keep the middle ground, background and foreground on separate layers of course. 
So I am painting super roughly in there. A lot of the time I think I get it wrong. And every now and then I go in there and remove random parts to fight the tendency of my brain to regularize everything and to make shapes aligned to one another. I want to make sure that shapes are emerging from one another in terms of silhouette. Then I will create a layer just for the sky at the back and I will create a gradient again sampling the colors from the references. Then since I feel that the screenshot from Maya is a bit strange in terms of colors, doesn't quite match what we have in there, I will start to paint the colors I need from Rocket Girl so that they will match those of my environment, so something a bit less CG looking. I will scale it down because it looks particularly big in this environment. I want her to look a bit smaller and I want the jump to feel a bit bigger. Otherwise the jump might feel a bit underwhelming. A nice solitary rock on the right just to close the composition a little bit on the right hand side. Then I will reduce a bit of the weight of the mountains in the background. I want the silhouette of the girl to emerge from them. And I would like to have a gap in the composition between the two platforms so that it will feel psychologically a bit more of a jump, a bit more of a gap that we have to overcome. Then I will find a planet that I can maybe stick up there. It doesn't matter if the background is black, I can use a screen blending mode and with the screen blending mode the black becomes transparent. So this way it's very easy to compose the picture with a black background. Again, I'm working on a very small picture because this way I prevent my brain from messing up and wasting time on detail. Of course, before coming up with this approach, I did try other solutions. Planets are round, so it's easy to remove unwanted pixels and I will make my planetary composition there. Boy, I really needed a new haircut and a new sweater. Now that I have those, I can duplicate the mountains on the opposite side to get a feeling for the composition. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of the mountains a tiny bit so that they feel a bit more integrated with the sky. And then with a hue and saturation adjustment layer, I'm going to make the sky a little bit redder. I'm going to use a color balance adjustment layer as well, just to push the sky a little bit more towards the red. And I'm going to group everything in there so that I can switch it on and off and compare it with the original composition. If you think of it, I did switch the position of the foreground rocks from the original composition, I moved them to the left. I felt that if I kept the closed side of the rocks to the left, I would have gotten a clearer focus on the character at the end of the shot when the character was on the right hand side of the camera. Now I sampled some mid-tone for the rocks of my references and I painted that mid-tones on my foreground rocks. And I'm going to group these rocks, create a mask so that now I can remove and add parts of the rocks as I please. And then I need some textures on the rocks. I would like them to have some believable textures. So I'm going to grab some reference pixels, dump them in the same group of the foreground rocks and, I, and use a soft light blending mode to make sure that I get the texture but not entirely the color from the texture there. And this gives me some textures for free on the foreground rocks. I will clean a little bit the mask just not to have leftover pixels on the, on the foreground. Every now and then I check how this thing works and I feel like we are going in the right direction. So I will start doing the middle ground platforms. I'll sample colors from the references, put the platforms layer in a group and mask it so that now I can de decide which part of the layer I don't want to see, which part I want to see. And then just like I did for the foreground elements, I want to grab some textures for the middle ground from my references. I will just paste them into the middle ground group. And again, I will composite them in soft light. Then I will grab the top part of a rock and drag it down to the top part of those two rocks. And again, composite them with soft light. That seems to start to look like something. And now I want to create another group, fill it with a color that I picked from the references and I want to generate the mountains. I want them to have some sort of round shape that is pointing towards the middle, some sort of curvy line of action that will embrace the character once the character is up in the air and about to land. So far I didn't really light anything up. I was just picking the basic colors of all the surfaces, but in here I'm deciding to brighten up a little bit the top part of the middle ground platforms and darken the bottom part. I'm not sure this is a great idea because I really plan to do the lighting later on using adjustment layers. So I think I, I may have to pay for this later, but I'm not quite sure. Another thing I really want to do is to grab some colors from the darker areas of the canyon reference and just break that evenness that I have in the foreground. Similarly, with the background mountains, I want to break that evenness and add a little bit of texture and make the lower part darker so that there will be more contrast in the lower part 
if compared to the foreground. And then I would really like to add some sort of feeling of layered rocks. So I will grab some texture from my references, just dump it in there, fill it up with the Content Aware Feel tool from Photoshop. And then again, I can blend them with soft light and add a little bit of rotation and scale to make them look a bit less straight. Then again, a hue and saturation adjustment layer will help me color correct it to make it look a bit more embedded. If you set the group to normal in blending mode instead of pass through, the adjustment layer will only have an effect on the group and not on the sky underneath. By reducing the saturation, increasing the brightness and decreasing the contrast a little bit in the background, you make the background look a lot more integrated and you make the foreground stand out a lot more because the foreground will now be more saturated and more contrasty. And now that I have this picture that looks about right, I can possibly export it into Maya and do some sort of reality check on the picture to see if this works. In Maya, you can't quite trust the colors you see in Maya viewport unless you take some measures to make them look exactly as you have them in Photoshop. Once I have tweaked the camera and the positioning of the image plane, I can export this single frame, bring it back into Photoshop and reposition the layers to match what I had in Maya. So I will know for a fact that the character, the camera and the matte painting will line up just fine. I still want to adjust the camera a little bit because I think that if I make the character look a bit smaller in camera, the effect will be better as far as the dramatic effect of the jump is concerned. The jump will look more believable and appealing. Then I take a cube and I start modeling a very rough version of the platforms so that I will be able to use these platforms to catch the shadows coming from the key light of my scene. This way I will be able to integrate those shadows of the girl straight onto my matte painting. However, I want to assign a noise in the displacement of my material because this way the shadows will look a bit less smooth as if they were cast on a surface that wasn't that even. And that will match the texture that I have in my matte painting. You don't really need to be too precise in here. What you really need to do is to more or less get the same character of the noise. So in here you see we get a fairly coarse surface. Now I have a little bit of a problem with the character legs not showing through in the render and that's because the render stats have primary visibility set to off on the shape and as a material in Redshift we can use the Redshift Matte Shadow Catcher. And the Matte Shadow Catcher has this ability to catch your shadows but only show them in the alpha. So the beauty render will only show the girl but if you go into the alpha you will see the shadows as well. This will make it a lot easier to compose it if you think of it because the cliffs aren't really visible. Right now, however, the cliffs are a bit visible because the jaggy surface of the displacement is casting a shadow. So I have to go into the render stats of Redshift and I have to disable the ability to cast shadows for the two platforms. This way I will only be left with the shadow coming from Rocket Girl. What I'm trying to do in here is to build a geometry that will generate a shadow on our character and on the environment to give the impression that the environment is a lot bigger and more articulated than our 2D drawing, as if the foreground rocks that I've just designed in Photoshop are actually extending down far away from the camera to the point that they're casting a shadow on the character itself. And as the character crouches, the character will go down into full light and this way we introduce the hero of the shot by putting the hero in full light once the hero goes into the anticipation pose. There you go, now you see that the character is cut in two by the light at the beginning of the shot. Still don't see the legs rendered out, so this is when I really have to go into the geometry, select it for the legs and go into the render stats for the geometry and make sure that the primary visibility is set to on. I don't know why in this particular rig that is not a thing. I am tuning the shader of Rocket Girl a little bit I should actually change the shader to a Redshift material because it's not really a good thing to render out with Arnold or Redshift using blinds and Lamberts. They tend to burn very easily. Now I can create a sky dome and give the sky dome the same color of the matte painting so that hopefully the color range of the matte painting will be used to light up the girl as well. I will lower the intensity of this a little bit. You're always trying to aim at avoiding pitch black and pitch white pixels in your render. I am going to duplicate the key light and orient it in such a way as to create a line of light to detach the character a bit better from the background. I'm going to check that my lighting works at the beginning, in the middle and on the end of the animation as well. I can use like linking to make sure that the rim lights are no longer affecting the platforms so that they won't generate strange shadows on the platform. We only ever need the key light there. 
Right now the Sky Dome is visible in my renders and under the environment section of the Sky Dome I'm going to disable enable background. That should give me the same lighting but without the visibility of the Sky Dome in the render and no alpha interference there. That's great. And you see you can color the color of the light a little bit towards a yellowish orangish tint. This will make sure it will look a bit more like a cartoon, a bit more integrated with the background as well. Please notice how the color coming from the Sky Dome is creating shaded areas that are pretty bluish, just like the background we see in the image plane at the back, which is great because this means it's going to integrate a lot better. And once I have my render, I can load it into Photoshop. Back in Photoshop, I really want to color correct those platforms so that they look a little bit more bluish. And I can use an adjustment layer to just do that, become a bit more bluish. For compositing purposes, I will have to split down the render into render layers and AOVs. But at the moment, what we need in Photoshop is really just the shadow of the girl, the girl itself. If you output from Maya an image containing only the shadows of the girl, then you can use that image as a mask to a color correction adjustment layer or to a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So that means that now instead of using the color coming from the shadow in 3D, you can just use that shadow as a mask to color correct the matte painting itself which is a principle we will apply once doing composting. So you see, I can just color correct the digital matte painting I've just made in Photoshop using the alpha of the shadow as a mask. And now if I zoom out a little bit, I start to see that things start to fall into places and the character looks a lot more integrated and the shadow looks way more integrated than it was earlier on. Now I want to paint a little bit more of light. I want to give the impression that there is a source of light in my matte painting, a clearer one. So I can create an exposure adjustment layer and crank the light up with that. Then a hue and saturation layer to control the color of that light, put them into a group, mask that group so that it doesn't affect anything and use the mask to trigger on those adjustment layers. And that way, whenever I paint the mask, Photoshop is going to render out for me an area of the foreground in this case, which is going to be brighter. I can do the same from the middle platforms. I can grade them with a hue and saturation as if they were hit by a certain color. I can put an exposure there to brighten up the whole scene. And then I can fill the mask with black and paint white only where I feel I need a bit more light. And you see that this way I can design a bounce of the light coming from underneath. That's very easy, I just need a very soft brush in there and I can color the bounce of the light very, very easily. Finally, I can color correct the character a little bit. If you look at the character, you realize that the dark points, the black point of the character is a bit darker than the rest of the digital mud painting. So I'm going to lift a little bit those blacks and darken the bright tones and desaturate the red a little bit. I'm going to blur the planet in the background a little bit because it looks a bit too crisp. And then on a mask using a very smooth and big brush, I can just paint part of the planet out so that it will integrate a lot better with the sky. And then similarly, I can create an exposure layer that darkens everything and I can apply it to the foreground rocks. This way, when I trigger the mask to on, the rocks will become darker and this way I can start to paint a bit of volumes even in the foreground rocks because the tendency you have when you draw this kind of stuff is to just to make a silhouette and call it a day. But really if you keep some volume there, they're gonna look a lot nicer. And I think now we have a much clearer idea on how to build a very, very basic matte painting, how to split the layers and how to integrate them and how to do some very basic rendering in Photoshop, how to do some very, very basic lighting in Photoshop without really knowing how to draw. We're just using adjustment layers if you think of it. In the next video, I'm going to go through making these static matte painting, something that we can work with in Nuke or in After Effects to make a proper composition of this that can work with animation as well. I hope you have found this video useful. If this is the case, please like, subscribe and hit that bell. Have fun!